Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast, a place where we focus on the business side of art to help you attract more customers, increase profits, and ultimately live a life of creativity and financial freedom. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and this is May Mural Month. We did this last year and throughout the summer where I interviewed exclusively muralists and you loved it, so we're bringing it back again. You know, murals are the most profitable part of my art business, and the way I'm able to make six figures while painting maybe three-fourths of the year. <laughs> you know, I love to take time away, you know, to travel and relax and work on side projects like my book I just wrote and all the things and getting paid the big bucks through painting murals is what allows me to do all the other things and have fun with it, you know, while having this creative financial freedom. And so this month, I'll be interviewing muralists exclusively to talk about how they built their art business and dissecting their strategies to give you the knowledge to do the same. Plus, I've made an extra special training video for you to completely lay out the benefits and strategies to getting your own mural business up and running. You can check that out at artistacademy.co slash muralmaster, artistacademy.co slash muralmaster, Master, and I've also included the link right here. You're going to want to check out that training, especially after you hear this episode of how well this muralist is doing and how quickly she made it happen for herself. This is a quit your day job episode, and we're starting this off with one of our very own Artist Academy advanced members, Lacey Crime. She is an East Coast muralist, and I was actually chatting with her not too long ago when she told me that her goal for the year was to make six figures. So she wanted to make $100,000 painting murals this year, and I was like, fantastic. I knew 100% that that goal was going to be able to be obtained either this year or next year. Like, if she was, she's putting it out there, like, she's, she's going to do it. But then, not long after, she shared that she had already made half of that goal just in the first quarter of this year. <laughs> I was like, I was mind blown. I mean, I mean, the girl has been working it and, you know, she's been doing this for a few years. She's learned how to paint large scale. She has confidence in her abilities. And it's just so freaking amazing to see someone, you know, and just see their hard work pay off. So I told her, let's hop on a call to chat about how you're making this possible for yourself so we can let artists, other artists know too. And she was like, okay, Okay, let's do it. So let me know what you think about our first mural month feature, our very own Lacey Crime. Hey there. So can you give us a little backstory about how you got into the arts and where you are now? Um, backstory as far as like, okay, I guess personal life real quick. Um, we're a military family. I have four children ages two to 11 years old. So I'm very busy. <laughs> if I'm not painting, I am a full-time mom. We are currently residing in Maine and previously most of my adult life has been in North Carolina at Fort Bragg and so we're hoping to go back there in another year because I'm just done with the cold so hopefully the army moves us (laughs) so I did not pick up a paintbrush until I was pregnant with my second child that was in 2013 I did attend the Art Institute of Tampa Art Institute of Tampa back in like 08 I believe And that was just for a year. I dropped out. I was art school dropout. And so, yeah, during that time, I never painted. So I always was afraid of paint. I thought it was messy. I thought that, oh, you can't erase it like you can with graphite or charcoal or anything. So I just didn't want to mess with it. Little did I know you could actually paint over your mistakes, but that was the way later. So in 2013, when I was pregnant with my second, I went to a friend's house and she had a custom painted letters for her child's room and it matched like the bedding and everything. So I remember feeling like, I think I can do that. And yeah, so I was like, I think I can do that. We could not afford extra decor for the room or anything. We're living paycheck to paycheck. So it was something that I really wanted to try myself. So I went and bought some cheap craft paints, didn't know what brushes to get. I got some wooden letters for her name. And I just remember like, laying it all out and just painting like her bedding to like match. And I posted on Facebook and I got a lot of positive feedback from that. And that's when I had a lot of friends asking to paint their kids' rooms, their letters. So on um, my Facebook group was, it used to be Lacey's letters. If you like go way back on my Facebook, you'll see like all the letters that I was posting. So that was a very, I think it was about like seven years straight that I painted letters, small scale letters, canvases, 
shoes, baby carriers. And it was just a hustle, like really, really like struggling to, yeah, I didn't enjoy it. (laughs) Actually, I enjoyed it in the beginning because I got a lot of work, but it was just so much time spent on a small project that I wasn't getting enough return. But for me, that's all the options that I had to be a stay at home mom and to try to paint at the same time. But it did, my skill level just got better and better, you know, with each order. So I was very confident in painting small scale. And I remember in 2016, I believe, I was confident enough to try painting on my son's bedroom wall. And I was done. Yeah, like I said, I was done with small scale. So I was like, let me just see if I can do this. And I had no friends who painted murals. I didn't know anyone. I wasn't big on Instagram yet. So I didn't know this entire world of like, all these artists that I could just follow and like get tips from like you. (laughs) So I went on YouTube, Google everything to try to like get tips on how to paint murals. And so, yeah, I just went at it. I painted this space theme and I posted on Facebook and I had a lot of great feedback from that. I had a couple friends that wanted their murals, their kids room painted. And I only charged like just for the supplies, which basically I paid more supplies than what they gave me, but it's okay. But it built my confidence up for, you know, just to do something more large. And from there, I still wasn't confident enough to paint murals full time. So I just like backed down and I went back to painting small. And I remember in like a couple years later in 2019, I was done. Like I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I was staying up to like three, four in the morning, sometimes working on orders because during the day I'm a mom and I can't just be yeah, painting all day sitting at my desk. So the balance was difficult. And I think I, what did I do? I actually, for the first time, reached out to a business that someone mentioned my name saying that they needed a mural. And I just remember feeling like, no, I'm going to get this. Like, this is why I'm going to get this job and I'm going to reach out because I'm so introverted and so scared to of rejection. And I just remember not caring. Like I was that desperate. I didn't care if someone said no to me. That's just, I mean, what's the worst they could do? And so I remember reaching out and they said, yeah, we'd like a meeting. So after the initial consult, I went home and I sketched something out and just gave them the design and they loved it and they wanted to go through with it. And that was, so yeah, I guess the first time when I really, really felt like this is something I can do, like this is a career, like a profession was when I was commissioned for that mural. And I remember feeling like, there's no way, like, I can't believe I made this much money. Like (laughs) something that takes me like, it took me like a week, I think. But I mean, and today, like it would take me one day, one or two days, but yeah, I was just like, oh my goodness. Like it takes me like a week to paint a set of letters. And I only get like what, $100 for that. And that's me working full time for letters. But then I hear I am painting a mural. I'm getting like $2,000 for something that takes me the same time it does for a small project. It just... Yeah, it made perfect sense. So I just remember feeling like this is what I'm doing and I'm going to keep being intentional and trying to go out and get more work. Wow, yeah. (laughs) It's like, you you take me back. I remember like some of those first big murals where you're like scared to death. (laughs) And it's so funny though, seeing where you are now and you're just painting big, huge murals in no time at all. But I just, I love that you shared the beginning part of it because we're, we're all a little scared and you, you remind me of myself quite a bit because I don't know why, but online, I just thought you were very outgoing, very nope. like, extra. <laughs> I, yeah, I just don't know why, but I saw pictures and from those pictures, you know, you just kind of like make assumptions. And it's funny mm-hmm. because a lot of people say that about me too. Like if, if they, if they meet me in person, they're like, you're a lot quieter in person than you are online. I'm like, Oh, thanks. <laughs> like, and so, I love this because this just shows any introverted artists out there, you know, no matter who you are, where you are, that you it's can funny. paint giant things. <laughs> yeah. Since we, the army moved us, like my, I was building my reputation up in North Carolina and then we had orders to move. So it really, really sucked at the timing because I was just getting my name out there. I was getting more work. And I think I remember messaging you saying like, I, I can't find like mural jobs up here. Like no one understands murals in Maine. <laughs> if they want it, they want it for free. And I'm like, I can't, I'm not doing that. So in the beginning I would travel. So my family lives in Maine. So my mom would watch the kids, which is an insane amount of like help. Yeah. It was amazing. So I go back to North Carolina for a couple of weeks at a time and I make like 
a lot of money just in those two weeks. And I come back and I spend time just full time with my family, which I was never able to do in the beginning painting small scale. Like it was just yeah, I like go back to thinking about that. I'm like, I never am going to go back there again. Like I'm, I'll do shoes every now and then because it's fun and it's like something different and I can do it in my house, but there's nothing that's going to tie me to that table, like that desk where I can't leave and I have to finish this order. And the next one starts after that. And yeah, it was just, it was very challenging, but yeah, I, know what I was going to say, I was listening to your book on the way down to North Carolina and like everything you were saying, I'm like, Oh my goodness. Like I am just like her. Like, she's just like me as far as like introvert. And, but yeah, no, I can put on a face on a picture, but if you want me to talk, then that's completely different. <laughs> I cannot talk. <laughs> and I can paint in front of hundreds of people now, but if you want me to talk about my life in front of people, I'm going to be like, Ugh, like, I don't know how to talk about my life. <laughs> like, I'll yeah. choke up. It's definitely a weird thing, <laughs> but yeah. okay. So right now, this is where like current day you're, you're still, you're going back and forth right now. Yeah. So I go back the end of May, beginning June, and I already have a couple projects. And so I do use Thumbtack as well to get more commissions. And it's been very successful for me. And then it's also word of mouth and social media. So it's like half and half exactly down the line of what I get for work. Okay. So you're getting half of your work from Thumbtack. I love to hear that because there's been a lot of hate on Thumbtack recently. (laughs) And I just did a Thumbtack job in Kansas City, which is like a few hours away, but it was really well paid. So I'm like, heck yeah, finally I got one. So it makes me really happy to hear that it's paying off for you. So can you maybe give us a couple tips on what what is your Thumbtack strategy? Say say you get one of those alerts on your phone. It's like, so-and-so is your direct lead. What then? Yeah. So you definitely, a, a thumbtack stresses that you need to be immediate on your response. So as soon as I get a notification, like I'll just stop, like I'll be painting a mural and I'll hear that thumbtack and I'm like, Oh, let me go respond and see what this is. And I'll usually reply with like, Hey, I can definitely do that for you. Um, what is your availability? Would you like to set up a meeting to talk? And it's a little bit different because I can't meet you in person since I'm thousands of miles away. Um, so I'll just say like, we can do a video chat or I can call. And if, like you said, like talking on the phone or in person is completely different and it almost secures that job when they talk to you rather than just like messaging back and forth. But yeah, no, I make it seem very positive. Like we can do this. I got this. What is your availability? Like, when would you like to start? And then I definitely ask their budget. I've learned not to waste a lot of time on saying like, let's do this. And then like the last minute, like, oh, I didn't know it was gonna be that much. Like we're not going to do it. So I do ask about budget in the beginning as well. Okay. How do you get them on the phone? Because like, I'd say every single time I respond to one and like you, I try to respond really quickly. I'm like, hi, yes. Yes. I would love to do your project. This is my number. Call me anytime. Do you call them or they call you? How, how do how I you call them? The I call them oh, because okay. they won't, they won't. It's like you giving your business card to someone and saying, Hey, I hope you look me up or call me. They're not going to probably not going to look you up or call you. They're probably going to, it's not as important as for me to get that job until I reach out to them. So they do on Thumbtack, they do give you their number. So I would just say, is this the number that you would like me to call you on? What is a good time? And a lot of times we'll text because I'm not a talking on the phone person. So like, I love texting and you don't want kids screaming in the background. So it's, it's really unprofessional for that. So sometimes I'll just say, hey, I'm sorry, I have my toddler here. And she just, it'd be easier just to text or I'll set up a time to call when it's not crazy. But yeah. And so you're getting a lot of those murals in North Carolina, but you're, you're living in Maine right now. Have you gotten any murals in Maine yet? I have. I've had a few. Um, and I think I have another couple. I do have one in Portland, actually. And that was from Thumbtack. That was the very first lead in the six months that I've had on Thumbtack in Maine. So that goes to show you like no one really is basically, I think, like word of mouth or like, hey, my friend can do this mural. And it's not really looking for professional. I'm not sure. Professional artists. That's just what I found. And a lot of them just think that it's a nice hobby and artists should just donate their time. So it's been very difficult to try to express to them that this is my job <laughs> and this is why I need to get paid. But yeah, no, it's, it's been slowly growing. So I feel like by the time we leave next year, I'll probably have more work and then it's time to leave. That's just how it is. But I'm okay. looking forward to going back to North Carolina and having more work all the time. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, that's not a bad setup. I mean, I'm sure, you know, when you're at week and a half in, in North Carolina, you're like, I miss my kids, you know, but, and then, yeah. but you get to come back and have two solid weeks of like, you have my full attention. So yeah. So I specifically take. said in April, like I'm not working at all in April because it's my daughter's, but she just turned two yesterday. And so it's nice to be able to have, like, you have your own business and have to say like, no, I'm taking this whole month off. Cause I made enough in just two weeks. The last time I went to, I know I messaged you saying like my goal and I put it on Facebook too. Cause like, if you put it on Facebook, it's going to happen or <laughs> everyone knows it has to happen. I said, I wanted to make a hundred K this year. And just in the two times that I've been in North Carolina and the couple jobs that I had in Maine, I've already reached half of that just in the first quarter. So I'm just like, my husband is like, I'm going to retire from the army and you're just going to like, I'll just be at home with the kids. <laughs> um, but yeah, I said, he's going to be my ladder boy. Just like your husband. I was like, he's going to come with me. He's going to help me set. Cause he's always about like, be safe. Like, don't be up there at nighttime with a projector by yourself. And I'm like, I can't, I don't have a choice. Like I have to, <laughs> but I'm like, you can come with me and travel with me. But yeah. It's been great. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I love that you are, are so open about the money aspect of it too. And I love when you post how much money you made into the, the Artist Academy in, in our group where so other people can see because it's very motivating. You know, you can hear all these stories about, you know, you're getting work, but the, just seeing those dollar figures and how much time you're spending on the murals, which is not a ton of time. Do you want to talk about maybe like how how are you pricing things and how much time are you spending? So in the beginning, I did go by square footage and I was strictly square footage because I really didn't, I went online and that's all I had my, my ideas from (laughs) was other muralists on Google saying charge by the square foot. And so I'm like, this is what I'm doing. This is what everyone else does. I didn't really know about hourly. So the first two years, I definitely was focused on square foot. And just this past time I was there, I did one mural. It took two full days and I had, I got 2,800 from that. But then the next one, the next day was just an eight hour day and I was done and I got 2,500 and it was a very simple one. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> like I should have gotten way more for the first one, like working my butt off for like my eyes were hurting, my back was hurting everything. And I'm like, and I got paid almost the same as this easy one. That was one day. So that's when I started t- trying to like change it up a little bit. So I'm, I think I'm going to go by obviously the dimensions. I have to look at how big it is, the complexity of design. And then I also, at this point, I do know how long it would probably take me. And I told the people, I said about eight hours. And they're like, is it really going to take you eight hours? And exactly at the eight hour mark, I was done. They're like, wow, you're really good at like knowing your time. Like, I really didn't know, but I have an idea. Um, so yeah, I go by how long it takes me and then just the detail is what I really want to focus on now. And so if there's more detail, then I'll charge a little bit more because I know that's just more time on those details. Yeah, I guess anywhere from 15 to 30 a square foot would be like average. I'm not sure, but it almost equals out to $100 an hour if I were to break it down or even more, even a little bit more than 100 an hour is what I found sometimes. So yeah, it's been awesome. (laughs) Like never have I ever thought that I would have like a profession like this. So right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just have to be like, I can't believe how much money people pay for this shit. <laughs> like, I'm like, it's so crazy. I know, right? <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, should I feel bad <laughs> that I'm charging? Like, but no, like <laughs> I don't feel bad because it takes a lot of talent, a lot of time. Like it's taken me nine years almost of just painting, painting, painting to get to this point now. So I'm like, no, I definitely deserve this and I earned it. And if someone doesn't want it, they won't pay for it, but the next person will. And that's what I've learned. Like you have one person who complains about your pricing and then, okay, moving on, the next person gets it. And that's just how it is. So it's been great. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I'm really glad. I have to also remind myself of stuff like that, of being like, gosh, I just, because I, on that thumbtack one, I made like $1,700 in one day. And it's like, whew. and I spent, I mean, like three hours driving there and back and then about five hours painting and I'm just like oh my gosh like (laughs) but yeah it's crazy what you can charge for this and I'm I'm glad that you see you know that you know because you put in all of that work because I have to remind myself that too I was like okay but how long would this have taken me you know in the early days like it would have been there all day or maybe even two days Mm -hmm. so and 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm just so, <laughs> I'm so excited for you. So let's do, let's just backtrack just a little bit to have just like a, an overarching like timeline. So you said you've been painting for about nine years. And so I want to emphasize that. So when you started, whenever you first painted big, so whenever you first painted your first bigger kids room mural, to now, how long has that been? Because there's a lot of listeners who are in their first year, their second year, and they're like, oh, this is so hard. And I'm like, just keep going. Like you can end up here. And it's so great. <laughs> you mean like how long would it take like for a project then than it does now? Like, Well, yeah. I mean, I guess you could say that too, but mostly like how long has it taken you to get to this where you are now? So like you said, you've been painting for nine years. You've been painting large for how many years? Actively, I say actively full time since 2019. So it's only been what three, a couple, a few years. <laughs> what yes. are you 2022 now? So yeah, it's really been that long. But I've also had all this time before then to know the business, to know, like, have customer service skills. Like I've been doing this way before it was only just smaller scale. So I think I just had everything ready for me just to go out. Like all I was waiting was for me to go out and reach out to people and to get that work. And yeah, it took a few years, I guess, but it is growing like tremendously now. Like every time I come back up to Maine, I still get messages from the last murals I did wanting more work. So it does take time to build your reputation up. So once you are there, like you'll just see work coming. I don't want to say that like promising you like, oh, you're gonna have work coming. But In my case, it's been great because I have had work continuously, like slowly, like coming in and then thumbtack and then everything else. So it's just been really working out for the better in my situation. Yeah. Which social media is your main one? Is it Instagram or? Uh, Facebook. Facebook Facebook has been like my, yeah, I know it's, (laughs) I'm not big on, I'm still like an oldie on Instagram. I still don't, I try to do reels more and stuff, but I, I still and mainly like Facebook. A lot of like my audience followers, they're more interacting on my Facebook than Instagram. I don't understand, but (laughs) that's just how it's been. But maybe because I've had like these customers who've been there from the beginning. So a lot of them are like, I remember you, like you did my kids um, letters back in like 2016 or something. And they see where I am now. So they just love following along with my journey. So I think Facebook is better when it comes to that like just following someone's journey rather than Instagram, which is just instant gratification of like a picture or a video. And they don't really know my story. And I haven't taken the time to tell my story on Instagram because I just don't talk. (laughs) But yeah, no, Facebook is great. It's been, I've had a lot of work only through there. Instagram was maybe a couple projects really, but yeah, Facebook is big for me. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. I like to know the tactical behind it. So we have just a reminder, Facebook, and some tech. So how are you using any kind of strategies to grow on Facebook? Or are you just kind of like posting your stuff? No, I, I just post my stuff. So I love, they love seeing the progress. Instagram, I'm pretty bad at showing the progress because it just doesn't look as pretty <laughs> with like the finished product. So like I try to do reels more so they can kind of see like a quick little progress video and then like the final result. But yeah, Facebook, they just love just regular pictures of just seeing like slow work in progress photos and it building up to the final picture and they get all excited about it. So it's worked out for me in that way with, with Facebook. I've tried doing that on Instagram and it hasn't had the same effect, <laughs> the same interest. So I just stick with Facebook as like just every now and then showing like my, my little story timeline. And then Instagram is just mainly like reels of the final project and the process, the process of it. That's what kind of what I found so far that works. So, but no, I haven't paid for advertising or anything yet. I've thought about it on Facebook, but I haven't had to at the moment because I'm pretty, I'm pretty like steady on my work. So yeah. Do you have any cool projects coming up that you're looking forward to? I go, well, back in North Carolina, I go to the last daycare that I worked in that I painted the safari theme and she's building a whole other section for like a drop-in kids daycare. So she wants like a whole underwater theme for that one. And that's going to be a big project. So I'm excited about that. And then Wayfair, cause I just painted for Wayfair the last time I was there and they want like a giant logo and that, so I probably want to talk to you because I, I love painting logos, but I also have no idea really how to still charge for them. 
and it's going to be pretty big. So I'm just like, I don't want to do square footage because it doesn't really make sense. But then hourly, I feel like I can get it done really fast, but I still want to get paid <laughs> decent for just doing like a day project. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm going to do another Wayfair logo um, the end of May, beginning June. So that's okay. what I have so far. But I know like probably through Thumbtack, I'll be getting more work for it by the time I leave. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're planning to stay about two weeks again and you're pretty much booked up, but then you'll likely get more while you're there. You're, does that typically happen? No. So no, yeah, I say two weeks because I can't obviously be away from the family more than that. I found and less than two weeks is not worth traveling. So I always like block off two weeks and sometimes even like a week before I leave, I'll get another project probably from Thumbtack because that's just what happens. It's just so random. And so I always have a few days just free. So if I don't get more work, I'll just head back home early or I'll take on that project last minute and just get that in. And it's always so far it's worked out in my favor doing it that way. But yeah, Thumbtack is so weird. <laughs> like right now I haven't had any leads and it's been like a good couple of weeks. And sometimes they trickle in every now and then and sometimes they get like five. It's just really weird. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to continue taking order, like taking leads up until probably a week before I leave to okay. see what I have available. Yeah. I just want to point out that, that really quick, because I think it's like that for all of us, you know, it's like, there's, oh, we have a really busy month and then for like a couple of weeks, nobody reaches out at all. And it's just, it's yeah. very unstable and it's very like irregular. <laughs> and I think it's kind of like fun in that way to where like, you know, you're not showing up for nine to five job and it's not the same thing every day. But I think it can kind of stress some people out, especially, you know, if you have like a week's worth of work and then nothing's coming in. And so I just want to point out, like, it's very normal to have that like ebb and flow and go, does it, does it stress you out at all? Or are you, are you, do you've been doing it long enough? So you're like, it'll come. I at the point where I feel like it will come. And if it doesn't come, I'm not worried that I've been fortunate enough to not have to work if I don't want to work. So if I get work, I get work. And if not, then it's like, whatever, I'll just stay at home and spend time with the family. But sometimes like, I feel like the leads, it will take forever to get one. And I feel like, do they even have my credit card information anymore? Cause like, maybe they're just not taking my like payment. So I'd have to go and double check, but it is really weird like that. And sometimes it frustrates me because I'll pay, what is this? Sometimes 15, sometimes $21 a lead, depending on where it is. And I'll get multiple ones in one week with no solid leads. And so you spent like 150 bucks because I put mine on unlimited before I had a set budget. And now I'm at the point where I can do take whatever I want. But then the next time I get a solid lead, it'll be like a couple thousand dollars. And that just paid for all the wasted leads that I didn't get. So it, it always works out in the end for me. It's always worth it to pay more put on your expense for your business as well. So I'm just like, it's going to go on my expenses. So um, yeah, it's like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's, this is really all I've had for today. I thank you so much for coming on and okay. talking about this. I think it's, I think it's just so motivating for people listening who you know are thinking about doing murals because they're just they're such good money makers. You know, I was, I was painting with a Tiffany. She's in the artist Academy. She drove down from Jeff city and she was painting with me and she's like, so what's your favorite thing about murals? And I'm like the money. <laughs> it's just Cause you like, well, that's why we work, right? That's it's why we spend so time true. away from our families. <laughs> like, I'm like, I love painting big. And I guess like the whole, like, you know, when you step back and you like, it's like, you're a little person next to this big thing and it looks really good. So it's easy to advertise like that and the money. <laughs> it's all yeah. so great. You're so I'm I'm not even kidding because like everything you said in your book, I swear I'm like, that is exactly how I am, or that is exactly how I think. And I had okay, so it's random, but I had this one artist interview, and it was like with a few other artists, and it was so bad. <laughs> like my interview was so bad, but like all these other artists had great things to say and so much like quotes and like their favorite artists and like they create for them. And I'm like, okay, so what inspires you? And I'm like money like I was the only one who said like well I only do this because I get paid like <laughs> I'm sorry I don't create for myself right now I'm not at that point but if I my time is very valuable so if I'm not like painting I'm with my family if I'm 
not with my family, then I better be getting paid for whatever I'm doing. But I know it's so funny. <laughs> the whole scoliosis thing, because I have scoliosis. So it affects my, like, the last one I did, I was standing for probably a good 12 hours. And it was the last two hour mark where I knew like, I'm, I'll be done in like two hours, but my back was like just killing me. And I had to like wrap my like shirt around my back and like tie it really tight to have like a brace. But yeah, no, I totally understand when you say scoliosis because I can't sit for too long and then I can't stand for too long. And then having kids just messed up even more. So, oh no, <laughs> don't tell me that. Oh no. <laughs> but <laughs> I've had four kids though. So you, you're good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> okay. I was like, I want twins. I'm like putting it out there that I'm going to get twins. So that'll just like in the universe. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. We are the same. That's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause yeah, everything I'm just like, and then the whole like talking and just being confident. I'm like, I know I just need to do more. I'm just not, I just need to do it, but I'm just not confident enough or I'm like, oh, I don't have enough time at the moment. So I'll do it another time. But yeah, I definitely need to get over the fear of like talking in front of people. But yeah. no, money motiv- motivates me. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that's okay to say that you know money is your m- motivator because like especially you know I'm from a small town and like I feel like it's almost even more like of a hindrance in a in the small town of people are like money doesn't matter, like don't be greedy, you know the whole thing, and I'm like mm-hmm, it does. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, no, yeah. I love I love making money. And then my husband, because we've never been able to save because we've always been in debt. So he's just like, he's still is baffled. Like, he's like, I just like sit here and like, whoa, like my wife does this. And he's like, you just, and he saw the struggle from the beginning. And he's like, I remember seeing you like being at your desk till two in the morning, like having to finish this order and like dreading doing the next one. It was just like one after the other. And he's like, and here you are, like, you're just chilling, watching Netflix with me at nighttime because you don't have to paint orders at night. And you have like this big project coming that's going to pay like whatever debt that we have. It's just been a huge, like, I want to say blessing. Like the fact that we have this talent that we're gifted with this talent that people don't have naturally. (laughs) So I'm very thankful. Yeah. Yeah, You, you built up that talent for sure. And it sounds like Mm -hmm. you have a really good support system. Was he in the beginning? Was he like, what are you doing? Or what did he go and like, I'm glad you're doing something you like or how, what, what was your support? He was system always like supportive of what I wanted to do, but I don't think he knew how successful I could be in it. He's just like, yeah, you can paint or yeah, that's nice. Okay. Go see what they say. And I'm like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to ask for this much. Like for this really he's like, okay. Like he didn't take it seriously until I'm like, I got the job. And he's like, oh, are you serious? <laughs> So now he's just like, make that money, like bring that bacon home. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, he's like, I can't wait to retire. And then you're going to be working. (laughs) And like, yeah, like I said, we'll be traveling together. So, and we haven't been able to travel because I've had, I was pregnant when I was 22. And just from there, I was a stay-at-home mom. So I've never had the opportunity to go travel. And we both really want to travel. And so we're finally at a point where we're getting out of debt. Our kids are getting older and we're just going to go. We're going to oh. have the money to go travel and do what we want to do. So that's so inspiring. I love that. And you know, it, it is true. Like with family, you know, like it's not a bad thing that they can't see like, you know, the futures that we see or cause they don't, cause they don't listen to the podcast and read the books mm-hmm. and stuff. And so I think just showing them, Oh, this is what I can do. They're like, Oh, it's, it's just, it's fun. You know, like yeah. they're, okay. I just, <laughs> it reminded me what you said earlier in another podcast that he'll be at work and he'll say, oh yeah, my wife is a painter. Like my wife does murals. And they're like, oh, that's nice. And he's like, yeah, look, this is her work. <laughs> and he's like she's pulling up like my page. He's like, look, this is what she does. Like, oh my goodness. Like she does paint. Like she can actually paint. But he's just like showing like, yeah, pimping out my work. <laughs> like this is what she does. Like, yeah, she's not just a regular artist. She paints big murals and like gets paid good money. But no, he's very extremely proud. Maybe too proud. So <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, I'm so happy yeah. for you. Just like at the place you're at now. And I'm just so happy for you. And I'm, I'm excited to see where you go with it. And please keep posting your successes in the Arts County because I think it really inspires some of the people who are, you know, newly joining and just learning to paint big for the first time, just to show them what they can do. Just because seeing your paintings and how big they are and saying how much you are made on them and how much time you spent. They're like, I think it's just eye-opening for some people. 
Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. I wish I had this when I first started. It would have been amazing to have a support system and to have so many people giving you the tips before you make mistakes. But hey, it's been great. I've learned <laughs> trial and error, which I also feel is a really great learning experience. So yeah, I'm happy I found you. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, actually, I found you before when I did the train mural and I couldn't paint clouds. And I'm like reaching out to you and like, hey, if I join the academy, like, will you teach me how to paint clouds? <laughs> sure. And, uh, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so, I didn't want to watch YouTube videos. I just wanted to join like a community. I think that's what I wanted more was like just to be in a community of like-minded artists who don't just do small scale. They do what I want to do. So it's yeah. been awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on and facing your fear of talking and it's you sounded great and everything everything is great oh, thank but, you yeah can you just <laughs> add what is your instagram or what, what, what is your facebook like where, where would you like people to go it's the same um instagram and facebook is lacy crime art no Lacey one has my crime last art. name so it's very easy to have like a website lacy crime art <laughs> so crime is in you commit a crime so l-a-c-e-y yeah. crime art Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Thank you again. And we'll be keeping in touch. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And that's a wrap. That's our first episode of May Mural Month. I hope you enjoyed this special quit your day job series with Lacey Crime. And if you're listening to this and thinking, fine, maybe I'll give murals a shot. Maybe they don't sound too bad. Or if you're like, oh, I want to, but uh, they just look so intimidating. I promise you it's not. It's just using a bigger brush (laughs) and I can help you. I can not only help you with the painting part of it, but also the business part of it, which is my favorite part, right? Like helping you make money and make a living and getting that get, getting to that level of you know having a creative life and having financial freedom along with it if i've done it if lacy's done it you can too and i made this extra special training video for you to completely lay out the benefits and strategies of getting your own mural business up and running and you can check that out at artistacademy.co slash mural master that's artistacademy.co slash mural master and uh, okay yeah I just I hope that you can tell the authenticity from our voices I guess you know I'm just two people who you know you start out scared and you just kind of figure it out and then you just hit this level of like oh things are working and all of a sudden you know all of the scariness and all of the risks that you took in the beginning and all the all the time and all the frustrations of not knowing how to paint as good as this person and you know just all the things they just they end up it's worth it in the end (laughs) I mean in the beginning it's really hard but in the end right now like the seat I'm sitting in right now the reason I started this podcast was to help inspire other artists to do what I do and I've tried all the things I do canvas art I do nfts I do all the things but murals are the number one money maker in my business as of right now Okay, and I know the strategies of how to get mural clients and how to keep them, how to keep make them happy and just how to start from the bottom. That's my specialty. I want to help somebody start from the very bottom being like you, you work a side job right now and you you don't even have an art art website you you have nothing right that's what i want i'm like okay let me help you come in here do this try that and then we'll work up to this level of being financially independent okay artistacademy.co slash mural master or you can message me on instagram if you have any questions okay i hope you have a guys have a great week and i will see you for the next episode of may mural month next week